Great. So non-destructive evaluation in the aerospace industry. That's what I'm going to go over today. I'm not going to really go into too much depth of the actual testing methods themselves, because we've already learned about that over previous lectures, courtesy of our professor. But I am going to go over a few things that we didn't cover in class in addition to how this technique is used in the aerospace. So, first of all, why do we need to use non destructive evaluation in aerospace? One of the major things that's a really big consideration that we haven't really dealt with in this class are fatigue cracks. There's lots of cyclic loading that can occur, especially with airplanes, for example, um, the wings oscillating up and down um, and with the landings, just like the frequent impact loading um, can really start to develop the T cracks in um, airspace structures. Um, as you can see in this image, that's just one of one example of the T crack that just kind of started to form just from regular use of an aircraft. Um, these things aren't always visible to the naked eye and with modern NDE techniques, um, we can detect these and decide if how if and how an aircraft needs to be serviced. So another reason is corrosion. Um, airplanes usually sit outside and are exposed to the elements constantly. Um, and just like civil engineering structures, they are exposed to corrosion. Um, I'll go over later the techniques that can be used to test this that are specific to aerospace, but eddy current turret testing, magnetic particle inspection, and visual visual inspection are all common and used to evaluate this um, type of damage. Another thing, impact damage. Um, we usually don't worry about this with our buildings and bridges or concrete, but things can certainly hit aircraft. Um, there can be debris out on the runway that gets blown up um, from the thrust of aircraft, birds in the air, hail, um, and all of those can cause dents, cracks, and other types of damage. Now, um, NDE techniques such as tap testing and visual inspection can be used to detect and evaluate the extent of this damage. I'll go into tap testing a little bit later. Um, also, manufacturing defects. Um, a lots of um, parts used in the aerospace industry have very fine tolerances and defects during the manufacturing process can certainly have an impact on an aircraft performance. And unlike a car, you can't just pull over on the side of the road. So things usually have to be up to a little bit of a higher standard. Um, additionally, wear and tear, this is just a natural process that occurs over time for aircraft and it's really important to note that as aircraft are used, they log hours in flight, they have hours on the ground, they get moved around on the tarmac, all those things just cause damage over time and can be important to evaluate. So I'm also gonna quickly go over some connection techniques used in the aerospace industry. It varies a little bit from what we've seen so far within civil engineering, so I just wanted to briefly cover it. Um, so first, adhesive bonding. Um, the use of adhesive materials to bond two or more parts together. Um, this is increasing in popularity as the um, chemical technology in adhesives is advancing. There are glues made of carbon-based petrochemical derivatives. That's the most common way for these um, to be made. Also, epoxy adhesives. So car carbon and boron-based adhesives have really high shear strengths and durability and they can be used as bonding or as a structural material. It's often used for bonding composite materials in addition to metal and composite parts, especially parts made from dissimilar materials because it's really hard to use metal to weld, for example, like a carbon-based um, composite that's just not going to work um, or anything that's just non-metallic. Um, some examples in airspace are bonding composite fuselage sections in modern airliners and bonding of composite skin to metal and frames in some aircraft. That's more common in like smaller aircraft, but it can be used throughout. So also we got mechanical fastening. This is similar to what we've seen, the um, structural bolts, um, usually just on a smaller scale. Um, this can also be used to bond, like to attach metal parts, metal parts, composite to composite or metal to composite. Some examples in aerospace using rivets to join wing skins to wing spars. Um, 
and using bolts to join engine components together. We also have welding. We've already something we're kind of familiar with within civil, um, but with, within aerospace, usually it's a little bit more delicate and precise. Um, this is usually used where the highest strength is required um, because it is a very intensive process to conduct. But some examples are welding aluminum wing spars and welding of titanium engine components. Also, we have brazing and soldering. So just the difference between welding and soldering. Welding is when you're going to melt the two metals that you're fusing together. Um, whereas in with brazing and soldering, you're melting a filler metal or a joining metal, but you're not actually melting the metal of your parts. Um, this is used in applications where high strength is not required, especially for delicate parts like computers or measurement instruments that could be damaged by that high heat. Some examples are brazing to join copper electrical connectors in avionics equipment and soldering to join small metal components in some electronic devices. So now we're getting into the meat of everything. So our non-destructive evaluation methods that are common in aerospace, you have tap testing, which is new. I'm gonna go over that briefly. Ultrasonic testing, eddy current testing, radiographic testing, magnetic particle testing, liquid penetrant testing, and infrared thermography testing. So tap testing, this is new. Um, basically, you hit something with a hammer and you see what sound it makes or how high it bounces. So just kind of like when we're doing the Schmidt um, rebound hammer test, this is a little bit less scientifically based and even, even that isn't the most precise method of testing. But what you do is you hit something with a hammer and you listen to the resulting sound. Vibrations and resonance or other acoustic properties may indicate the presence of internal damage or defects. For example, if you were to hit a like a composite where there was like full bonding, you might have like a nice crisp ding, for example. But if you had an aircraft skin that was delaminating from an impact, you might hear a little bit more of a thump. Um, this is something that does have some advantages and disadvantages, and I'll kind of go over that real quick. So you can detect delamination, just like I was talking about, cracks and voids, especially in composite structures. You can use it to detect corrosion um, and other damage in metallic structures. It's useful for inspecting large and complex structures where other techniques may be impractical or less effective. For example, wings, fuselage sections, and even rotor blades can all be inspected with this technique. And it's usually like a first indicator. It's very easy to do in the field. It's relatively simple and inexpensive. And it's like I said, a first indicator of damage. Disadvantages, it's not always reliable. For example, if there was a void in a composite and fluid filled it, that may impact the sound. You may not get quite the same acoustic indication. Um, of damage. Um, factors that can affect the shape and size of the structure being tested, the location of the, of the defect, and especially the skill and experience of the technician performing the test. So you have a new technician and they're on the job, they may not be able to hear this, or if they're in a loud environment, it really could be a challenge for them to detect damage using this technique, but it is commonly used. So next we're gonna kind of move into our ultrasonic testing. And we already learned about this um, in class, but just briefly, materials that can be tested include aluminum, titanium, steel, various alloys, and carbon fiber reinforced plastic composites. This is new, something we haven't really talked about in our class, but I'll kind of get into it a little bit more later. And the types of parts that are commonly expected include lap joints, bonded structures, landing gear, that's new, um, airfoils, engine components, and some raw materials too, pre-manufacturing. So some common inspection applications for ultrasonic testing, turbine and propeller blades, engine components, composite structures, aircraft skin, and welded and bonded blades. One thing I do wanna note is I'm gonna, multiple test methods can be used to test similar structures. 
So I'm going to go over them in more depth at the beginning, and I'm going to kind of quickly go over them at the end as different techniques can be applied to them. So turbine blades. UT can be used to inspect the internal structure of engine turbine blades, just like cracks, voids, and defects that cause failure. So some and many turbine blades are solid, but not all of them are. And many of them have cooling channels because in high heat applications, you don't want your blade turbine blades to melt um, during operation, but also during manufacture or if there's an impact loading into the blade, let's say a bird got sucked in, it could potentially damage it. And this is a way to evaluate if there has been significant damage um, to that structure. Um, if there was damage and it was running at full operation under full load, it could just explode. Um, so that would be a catastrophic failure um, for that aircraft. Other things, internal engine components. Um, it can be used to inspect the internal structure of engine gears, rods, drive shafts, and surfaces. Again, to detect cracks, voids, and other defects that could cause failure. This guy is going over a gear looking for some defects in the structure. Uh, and this is really common just to go over all the parts in an aircraft to make sure they're up to um, FAA standards for operation. Composite structures. So composite structures are structures where you have multiple different materials or structural um, geometries that have kind of been combined together to make a single thing. Um, these are really common in airspace because they can provide really high strength or really low weight and every ounce counts in aerospace because not only do heavier aircraft require more fuel to get the same amount of like acceleration or just to stay in the air, um, it also can affect the performance of an aircraft when it's heavier. So that's just something to note, and UT can be used to inspect for delaminations, especially that's something very common in composites when there's multiple layers. Some of the layers will lose adhesion and come apart. Um, this can just be from normal wear and tear. It can be used from caused by fatigue or impacts, or if like water got in one, for example, it could also cause delamination. Um, there can be voids or irregularities too that can arise from manufacturing. Um, and all of that can be detected with UT. Another thing we haven't really talked about yet, lightning strikes. Airplanes get struck by lightning all the time. Um, most aircraft have ways of dissipating um, this energy and kind of letting it go around the shell of the aircraft and then going out. So if you look in this diagram, um, usually um, lightning might strike, for example, at the front of an aircraft, and because it's moving so fast, the lightning is kind of going to slide down. The aircraft's going to kind of slide by the place that the lightning is touching. It's not going to stay at a fixed point as the aircraft moves forwards. And you can see here, this would be the whole range that the lightning would be entering the aircraft from. It could be a very small space, or it could be longer and more significant. And if you see here, it's exiting the aircraft through its belly. Now, this is critical to note because one, um, if the lightning or the electricity doesn't go around the shell of the aircraft, it could really damage some critical electronics um, inside the cabin. And like you can see in this picture above, um, there can certainly be some surface damage to the skin of the aircraft. So both of those two things are really important to note um, because one, evaluating the damage um, on the surface of the aircraft, because that could, um, could influence its ability to have lift and stay in the air, but also kind of going into those internal structures um, and making sure all that avionics equipment is still working properly. Um, but for composites, UT can be used to see the damage and the extent of the damage um, of a lightning strike. There's usually visual indication of burning um, and even some spalling at the site, but um, kind of seeing inside that composite structure, UT is very good at doing. 
So kind of getting more into our composite structures here. Um, you can see there's like damage and honeycomb structures. There's a lot of different types. Um, you can reference all of this later. Um, the slides will be provided to you. But just really quickly to go over it, you're going to see delamination between the piles of the outer skin here relative to the surface. Um, here, you can see the spotting between the outer skin and the core. Damages within the core, like variations and waves within the structure. All of that type of stuff. Oh, and like I said earlier, fluid ingress. That's something huge problem um, with a composite structure. It's not solid, so stuff can get into it. Um, going along, again, you can kind of see the way that you would use UT in an ultrasonic structure. For example, if there's a disc bond, those waves would want to go through it. There's no connection there. Um, furthermore, you got the aircraft skin can be used. Um, to inspect the thickness of an aircraft skin, because not all aircraft have composites. They can just have a very thin layer of metal or some other material kind of over the surface. And you can use UT to see um, the thickness of it, because, for example, if there's corrosion, it could reduce, it could be from the exterior or the interior of the aircraft. Um, and you can use it to check the bond between the aircraft structure and the spin. So, this is what that would kind of look like um, if it was if it was being tested. You can kind of see at the top, like the interface, um, and then you have that little gap there. It's a little damage and the lamination, and then down here where you see that lighter slot, that's kind of like the loss of the back wall behind the skin. You can also use it on welded and bonded joints. I'm going to cover um, landing gear a little bit more later. But you can also use ultrasonic testing to check landing gear for their structural integrity. Now, moving on to eddy current testing. Um, eddy current can be used to detect flaws in material. This is kind of an overview. I'm not going to um, go to in depth for the sake of time, um, but this is something we covered earlier in the semester. Some common um, applications of eddy current in aerospace are inspecting component surfaces. Heat exchangers, that's new, um, weld bolt holes, composites, and landing assemblies. So, um, surface inspection, it can be used to inspect the surface of metallic parts, lots of parts in aircraft, making sure they have clean and smooth surfaces without flaws is really important, especially in the engines and on other bearing surfaces. So, now heat exchangers. So, in aircraft, a lot of times you really got a lot of heat going on, you got to deal with it. Like I was talking about earlier, I heat in the engine can really be problematic um, if it's not controlled. So a heat exchanger is a device used to transfer heat between two fluids without allowing them to mix. For example, having your oil in the engine and then some type of coolant, you can run those two things through this type of a structure. Um, this is a um, fluid to fluid heat exchanger. Um, there are also air to fluid heat exchangers where air is flowing through and then you have your fluid going through one other part of it um, like a radiator is an example of that you might see in your car um, but they're really commonly used in aircraft to regulate the temperature of various systems especially the engines avionic systems which can create a lot of heat and the cabin air because of course the people the occupants in an aircraft need to be kept cool um, and eddy current testing can be used to um, detect corrosion, cracking, pitting um, within a heat exchanger and kind of monitor its lifespan because if fluid spurts out everywhere, this could also cause a catastrophic failure. Um, you can use it to inspect welds, like I talked about earlier, bolt holes, lots of bolts in the aircraft, uh, especially where um, structures are mated together. This could be like really important, especially on the exterior. Um, and this can be done in service or during the manufacturing process. Um, this most likely an aircraft would be used, an aerospace would be used in the field um, to inspect things. So landing gear, all right? So again, lots of forces, lots of impact loads go through the landing gear and any current can be used to inspect um, different structures, for example, the wheels um, of a large aircraft are being inspected here just for cracking 
um, along that bearing surface uh, at the center of the wheel. Now we're going to move on to radiographic testing. Um, some common applications in aerospace, again, critical engine components, some composite structures, welds, fasteners, and connectors. Um, so, like I was mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, um, turbine blades can have some really serious geometry going on. Um, if you look on the inside of this, in this picture, there's some holes on the inside, and that's the fluid. Um, can move around. Look right here. This void is part of cooling. Um, but here you can kind of see some cracking that's been exposed by an x ray. And um, this is a very effective way to test lots of components. It's not uncommon to test all of the turbine blades this way, or at least a large sample of them, to see. If this type of damage exists, this probably wouldn't be done in the field. Um, also, it can be used to inspect composite structures, like I was talking about, with kind of like this complex geometry being pushed together. This is an example of that. Um, and RT can be used to test defects, elimination, fiber breakage, and voids. It can also be used just to check that the geometry of the structure was made correctly. Um, this is a composite structure x-ray, and you can see here in this region, there's these really nice honeycombs, but if you look down here in the bottom, there's some damage like this, the geometry has kind of misshapen, and you can also see up top where there's like delamination between the outside and this inside of the composite structure. That's something that's really useful, um, a really useful application of RT in aerospace. Um, as more composites have been developed. Um, this is just a very efficient way to assess damage and to maintain quality of manufacturing. You can use it to inspect welds. Um, this is really common when inspecting welded structures, especially in the manufacturing process. Again, um, x-ray testing is very common to make sure that you have full depth penetration, um, and then there's no voids or cracks in the wells. Um, it can also be used to make sure that cracks haven't formed from the stress of flight, but this is just less common. All right, magnetic particle testing. So common um, applications of MPT in aerospace, again, inspecting various components, engines, landing gear and components, and shafts and gears. So MPT is often used to inspect things such as turbine blades, compressor blades, and other components for surface defects such as cracks. You can see this lady um, using MPT to assess a turbine blade in this picture. Um, so this is a usable application of the jet turbine. And then we also have our landing gear components. Again, I'm just gonna talk a lot about landing gear. Um, but really high forces are put through landing gear. This is a tie rod right here. Um, and as you can see, kind of at the edge of that bearing in the center, some cracking has started to occur. And you can use MPT with fluorescent coated particles to really like detect um, damage to these types of structures. Um, and just because, again, like significant loading also um, creep because can occur because aircraft are sitting on their landing gear when they're not flying. Um, and it's for commercial airliners, especially 50% of the time they're on the ground, 50% um, of the time they're on the air, best case scenario. So a lot of, a lot of time spent, spent sitting on their landing gear. So it's something really important to check on. Um, other things, inspection of shafts and gears. You know, you can use MPT to inspect drive shafts, gears, and other critical components um, that transmit torsional forces um, for surface and near surface defects. For example, a lot of helicopters have jet turbines that run in parallel, but they use drive shafts to drive their rotor. Um, using um, MPT, you can evaluate those critical 
components because of those torsional loads that they're exposed to. So now liquid penetrant testing, um, common applications in aerospace. We have propeller blades and components. We have our landing gear. Again, can't iterate how critical that is. Um, if your engine fails, you still got to land. So that's why it's so important. Um, and every every flight is just time between landings. Um, our aircraft skin and again, our shafts and our gears. So inspection of propeller blades is something kind of common. Um, there's lots of force that is put through the bolt holes on a propeller blade for a propeller driven aircraft, especially during startup, because it's not just a continuous semi smooth load. It has to start going. It can be exposed to some rapid shock loading during startup. So LPT is really commonly used to inspect these propeller blades and bolt holes because propeller blades can also hit stuff and stuff can hit them during flight. Um, and it can be used to detect cracks and other surface defects which can compromise their integrity and performance. Another thing, expect inspection of landing gear components. I mean, I can't iterate how critical this is, um, but this is a wheel. Um, I showed you earlier how um, eddy current testing was used to inspect kind of near the hub, um, but here you can kind of see around the outside of the wheel there are some surface defects. Um, and this could cause failure um, during operation, just from the forces of loading, of landing. We also have uh, inspection of wing components, especially, but this could be this could be used anywhere on the fuselage of an aircraft. Um, damage does happen to aircraft on the ground. People driving around an airport could hit them. Um, luggage being loaded could hit the outside of an aircraft, for example. Um, and it could scratch the skin. Now, using uh, LPT, you could evaluate the extent of the damage, where damage is, um, if you're not sure, um, and figure out if it's actually gone all the way through the skin of the aircraft or if it's just kind of sitting on the surface once you've identified the location of the damage. Um, this can also be used to test for things that have damage that occurs while in flight. Um, like impact loading, like if a bird hit um, the front of an aircraft, just kind of checking, checking to see, all right, did it just kind of come in or is there some cracking um, in the skin and also for scratches. Also, again, rearing inspection of the aircraft skin, um, not only with impacts, but with loading from fatigue over time, just from flight. You can use LPT to test and check the skin for defects as to what this person um, is doing here. You can also use liquid penetration testing to um, check shafts and gears. Surface cracks are really common in these types of structures um, just due to the nature of the loading that they're exposed to. So um, you can check them for cracks, porosity. Um, gouges and seams. So some of this is stuff that might happen more on the manufacturing side um, and the cracks may happen more from the use and porosity could just be due to corrosion um, over time in the service. And the last thing we're going to go over really briefly, this is newer in aerospace, is the use of infrared, infrared thermography. Um, IR can be used to inspect aircraft skin and composite structures by measuring the temperature distribution of the surface. Um, it can be used to detect delaminations, voids, and cracks, which appear as areas of different temperature. And one of the things I do want to note is this guy's using a heat gun um, to heat up the structure, and then they're checking the image for that. Um, most of the surfaces on airplanes, especially with composites, um, they tend to act more as insulators than as conductors, um, and they don't have um, this humongous heat capacity just because of the lower mass. Um, like for example, a concrete structure might. So having this like artificial source of heat um, can be used to do that. Now, checking for distribution of heat and the way that cooling starts and stops like heating, how fast the heat goes into a certain area. For example, if there was a delamination or a void in the structure, for example, you have a composite and you have a void here, and you apply the heat source over this area, 
this region would heat up slower because of the insulating effect of this defect because of the air inside of it. Um, so it would probably heat up a little less quickly. Um, and that's something that you could detect by using R. Um, any questions? Um, so that is something that can is not federally determined, at least in the United States. So within the United States, um, the testing regimen for aircraft is not specified by the Federal Aviation Administration. It is typically specified by the manufacturer of every aircraft. So most aircraft are inspected on a like total time and flight basis. So for example, every 200 flight hours, the manufacturer recommends that you do this check on the engine, this check on the landing gear, this check on different parts of the fuselage. Some of these, like visual inspection, for example, is conducted every single time an aircraft flies by law. So for an aircraft to take off, you have to do a walk around with the aircraft. You have to visually inspect surfaces of the wings, or any signs of cracking or scratches, those types of surface damage. Um, making sure that the tires are inflated, make sure all the structures are intact by moving um, the flight control structures, making sure that those are working this very simple like NDE, just visual inspection and just by manipulating the structure of the aircraft to make sure that it's actually working. Um, so that happens every single time an aircraft flies, but for these more extensive things like the techniques that I went over in this, this would be something that would be likely to happen with like full engine overhauling. For example, I think a lot of aircraft every like small civilian aircraft, maybe like every 500 to 1,000 hours of flight time require a full engine rebuild. And during that process, a lot of these techniques could be used um, to inspect um, engine components for wear and tear to see if they need to be replaced or if they can remain on the aircraft, um, kind of maintaining their serviceability. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right, great. Thank you very much. Awesome. Great. Thank you.